Today I'm going to be talking about the um, IDE ratio. So the last uh, discussion we discussed the concept of the I time and the E time and uh, we did some basic calculation of the I time and E time. Uh, and uh, basically what would happen is I'd give you uh, or I would, I would give a rate let's say 10 breaths a minute and then we'd have to identify or calculate the what's known as a total cycle time so if you're taking 10 breaths a minute the way that we identify or the way we calculate the total cycle time is we go well if there are 10 breaths in a minute and I want to find out how many um, basically how many seconds it takes for an entire breath and what I mean by an entire breath is from inspiration back to inspiration so the entire inspiratory and expiratory phase of a single breath inhale exhale and then move on to the next breath so let's just go ahead and give uh, I'll give you the example of the 10 breaths a minute So 10 breaths a minute so the way we calculate that is we take 60 there are 60 seconds in a minute so 60 goes on top we divide that by 10 10 goes into 60 how many times? 6 times. That gives us a total cycle time of 6 seconds. And then I would give you something like an I time. I'd say, okay, well, if you your total cycle time is 6 seconds and your I time is, say, 1 second, then you need to find out what your E time is. And, and that was a fairly easy calculation. You just subtract the I time from the total cycle time and whatever left over, whatever is left over is your E time. In that case, uh, if I subtract 1 from, from 6, that gives me uh, five seconds left over. And so I spend one second inhaling and five seconds exhaling. Now the IDE ratio takes this concept just a little step step further and what we do with the IDE ratio, again it's a ratio, is we will set the the I part, the inspiratory time will make one. And because with a ratio it, it is basically what we're doing is we're dividing the so total cycle time into, into little parts and it's kind of like um, that old time recipe that maybe you've done where they'll say uh, one part water to five parts flour. And um, that's basically the analogy with ID ratio, only instead of um, uh, flour and water, we're, we're talking about time that we spend inhaling to time we spend exhaling. So let me just go ahead and take you through uh, a calculation here. And I've got a little, little little whiteboard I'll write this on and I'll, I'll show it to everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a rate of 10 and an I time of 0 0.9 seconds. So everybody can see that. Rate of 10, I time is 0 0.9 seconds. So let's go ahead and first break this into a three-step process. The first step is to calculate the total cycle time. Well, let's go ahead and do that. We'll calculate the total cycle time. And that should be a fairly easy exercise. I go ahead and I take 60 seconds on top divided by 10. And that should give me 6 seconds for total cycle time. So hopefully everybody can see that. 60 divided by 10, 6 second total cycle time. So that's step 1. Alright, now step 2. Just like we did in the last video, we need to identify the I time and the E time. <clears throat> okay the I time and the E time. Well, we know the I time is 0 0.9 seconds. So what do I do? Well, I just subtract 0 0.9 from the 6 because 6 is all is the total amount of time I have to work with. And that gives me 5.1 seconds. And then if I add those together, it should equal 6 seconds. So that is exactly what I've done here. So I time and E time. And then what I do is I need to set my I time to 1 or make that 1 as, as far as a ratio goes. So the formula that I'll use is 1 colon E divided by I. So that is the formula I'll use. It's 1 to the expiratory time divided by the inspiratory time. So I'll set that up. That'll be 1 to 5.1 divided by 0 0.9. Hopefully everybody can see that. 1, 5.1 divided by 0 0.9. I go ahead and do the math, and that comes up with 1 to 5.67. It goes on and on, but we'll just go ahead and round it up. So, that is my IDE ratio. I spend one part 
of the total of the total cycle time, one part of that is is spent inhaling, and 5.6 parts of that is spent exhaling. So that's what we mean by the I to E ratio. It's a ratio. It's one part breathing in inhaling to how many parts exhaling, and we always set our inspiratory time. We always set the inspiratory time at one. We make that one part, and then however many parts are left over are the parts that we spend exhaling. So let's just go ahead and do another um, another uh, exercise here real quick in IDE ratios. Um, and I should say that the normal IDE ratio in, in an average adult is going to be about 1 to 2 to 1 to 3. So one part inhaling to two parts exhaling to one to one part in, inhaling to three parts exhaling. Now, in patients that have s obstructive disorders, chronic um, bronchitis, asthma, cystic fibrosis, uh, bronchiectasis, cyst um, uh, and um, <coughs> uh, chronic bronchitis, uh, those kinds of, of, of pathologies are generally going to need to have longer E times. So one to two to, to one to three may not be optimal for them. They, meet, ne they may need faster flows shorter IT times, longer E times, and longer I to E ratios. So a 1 to 4, 1 to 5, to even 1 to 6 may be an optimal I to E ratio for somebody with obstructive uh, disease because they have airflow obstruction, they need more time to exhale or they'll end up air trapping. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a rate of 12 and an I time of 1.1 seconds. So we got a rate of 12, I time 1.1 seconds. So step one, we need to find the total cycle time. How do we do that? Well, I do 60 divided by 12, and that should give me 5 seconds. There we go. 60 divided by 12 gives me 5 seconds. That's my TCT, my total cycle time. Okay, step 2. I know the I time, 1.1 seconds. Find the E time, I take 1.1 out of 5, and that whatever's left over is my E time. In this case, it's 3.9 seconds. Okay, and then step 3, I'll use that formula 1 to I, or to E over I. 1 to E over I. 1 to E over I. And in that case, that is going to equal 1 to. 3.9 divided by 1.1 and that will ultimately give me an ID ratio of about 1 to 3.55 I'll go ahead and show you guys that so there's my formula E over I 3.9 over 1.1 1 and then I went ahead and rounded it just a little bit 3.55 so that's really that simple. If we break it down into that that three-step process of um, identifying the three, the total cycle time, the I time, the E time, and then one to E over I. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze one more in here. I'm on a rate of 16, and I time of 0 0.8 seconds. So I'm going to first find my total cycle time. That's 60 divided by 16 is going to equal 3.75 seconds. My I time is 0 0.8. My E time in this case will be 2.95. 0 0.8 plus 2.95 equals 3.75. And then step three, my I to E over I, 2.95 divided by 0 0.8, and that's going to equal 1 to 3.7. So step one, step two, step three and I'll just go ahead and throw this up here for you guys and feel free to stop the video if you need to step one my total cycle time step two finding my I have my I time already I just need to find my E time and then step three one to E over I and that gives me my one to three point seven the only time that this formula does not work is in a specialty mode of ventilation called inverse IDE ratio ventilation and that's where I actually spend more time inhaling than I do exhaling and this is a specialty mode designed for um, oxygenating patients that are very difficult to oxygenate such as an ARDS patient and uh, we compromise, we essentially compromise ventilation to oxygenate and of course that causes things like increased um, carbon dioxide and, and that gets into um, therapeutic hypercapnia, something we'll talk about